My name is Paul Wagner and uh, I'm the CEO of Forkfly and we, we started off basically as a simple couponing solution for the iPhone. In fact, we were one of the first couponing apps on the App Store and since then we've gone through uh, quite an evolution. We now build software for the publishing industry that allows them to uh, basically uh, bring advertisers back into the local fold um, through this technology that we've built. So the the concept for Forkfly came to me just over three years ago. I, I used to own a restaurant. It was a an absurd side project that I took on and um, something I'd always dreamed of doing. And at that time, you know, we really didn't have a lot in the way of marketing options. We had the Portland Mercury, the Willamette Week, um, and occasionally I get a visit from my city search rep. And at the time, you know, city search was seven hundred and fifty dollars a month. So here I am with this startup wine bar on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. I'm trying to make a go of it and I'm paying for, pay, uh, I'm using this pay-per-click model with, uh, with City Search, running through my clicks by about mid-month and going from page one to oblivion. So one night I was a bit frustrated because we were having a slow night. We had many of those, sadly, but um, I was having a slow night and I decided I wanted to just log in and update my content on that website. Not only that, but I wanted to say that we've got some great new offers running, and um, I'm fairly savvy with computers. I, I was lost. It took me hours to manage the content on that site. So I was getting really frustrated, and I finally had that moment at about midnight, um, after hours of trying to navigate through this site. I said, enough is enough. I, I'm, I'm, done, I'm done with this program. So I then, uh, I then tried to cancel it. That was another 30 minutes to figure it out. And when I finally hit the submit button, a little pop-up said, your city search rep will be in contact with you within 24 hours. <laughs> that was the answer. It hadn't canceled. Um, and I was just told I'd be notified. So I went to bed furious. And it sounds cliche, but that's they say that the best ideas come to you when you're laying in bed. And at 3 a.m., I woke up and went straight from my computer. I opened Photoshop. I started designing the Forkfly interface. Um, this concept of Forkfly did originate with the forking over something of value on the fly. So you're providing value to the consumer, but you're doing it instantaneously. It was that lag that was making me so frustrated. Um, so long story short, I started looking through the local development scene to see if I could get someone on the project. Of course, um, we had some amazing teams here, but they were already overloaded. One of the reasons was the Obama 08 app, so a number of the developers I talked to had just gotten a bunch of national attention, and they said, we'd love to take on the Forkfly project, but we're talking months before we can even start it. And I was just in this weird mindset, I realized I have to do this now. So long story short, went on a bunch of mobile forums, ended up finding a developer in Mar del Plata, Argentina. A week later, I was on a flight. And I was there for roughly three weeks, working closely with the developer, um, wireframing, trying to get everything together. I had a prototype about a month later, and then we uh, deployed, I think in January of, of uh, 2009, if I'm not mistaken. I'll, I will admit that the first name for Forkfly was Spoonfly. So um, it, it's sort of funny, but uh, I came up with the idea. I said, Spoonfly, that sounds great. You're spooning a deal over. So immediately I went to, uh, I think I went to GoDaddy at that time and typed in Spoonfly. And, um, it, and it was available for $1,500. I said, well, look, I mean, this is, I don't have those resources at the moment. I really want to try and uh, develop this for a pittance. So I sat there and thought it over for a few minutes, literally a few minutes. And then I tr tr tried Forkfly and sure enough, it was available. I'd love to say that there was a lot of thought behind uh, the name but I realized you could fork something over or spoon it over, and either way it works. Um, the logo itself, uh, I wanted something that was just going to be really quirky, and I also wanted something that, uh, Forkfly is an interesting name for a company, for starters. Um, if you're forking over content, that's great, but it also seems to, I mean, I think a lot of people think, well, this is for restaurants, forks. So we immediately had to say that's not the case. We support all verticals. Um, and the other interesting thing was trying to convince local merchants that, especially restaurants, that having a sticker with a giant fly on it was going to be okay at their restaurant. And, and sure enough, 
and this only in Portland would this work, you would think. Uh, they absolutely loved it. Um, so it was really gratifying walking around the Pearl District, for example, and seeing this goofy thing smacked up on, uh, on local merchants' windows. So that's the story of the fly. Uh, so when we deployed Forkfly 1.0, I built a fairly large local sales team and took a traditional point-to-point -point model. We had a sales force that was out in the community selling subscriptions to the platform on a monthly basis. I think it was maybe a little bit before its time. Um, that was one of the first hurdles. What I quickly realized, I started seeding the Seattle and San Francisco markets. And what I realized is that to keep it affordable, which at the time we were between 79 and 129 a month, uh, to keep it affordable, we really needed a new model. If I had to hire uh, local and regional sales management uh, to achieve these objectives of expanding, it suddenly became uh, non-scalable. Uh, well, certainly finances. Of course, initially we were uh, basically self-funded. Um, that was one of the first obstacles, so I had to have the original software developed in uh, Mar del Plata, Argentina. Uh, to make it cost effective. And of course with that, with outsourcing, uh, comes a number of other challenges. Uh, so combine, so when you look at development and then combine it with the, uh, what I can concede was a faulty model originally, uh, that certainly tripped us up in a major way. So I think if I were going to lay any advice on someone, I would certainly suggest, one, you know, follow your heart on something like this. This is really the first thing, with the exception of the wine bar that I said, I really think there's a need here. Um, that's the first thing. And the second thing is, you know, I think in this day and age, especially, there's a lot of talk right now that we're in a bubble. I think that um, we don't really carefully consider a business model. So we, we, we sort of design first and then hope that there's a market for it. I don't know that that's necessarily a, a great approach. Um, right now you'd look around and, and think that it was. Uh, but um, we, you know, I, I think if I knew then what I know now, um, I would be in a completely different place. Now, I'm really happy with the way things are progressing. Uh, publishers are adopting this technology um, and seeing tremendous results. And, um, and we're just really excited about where it's headed. Obviously right now, fragmentation is a pretty big issue in the mobile space. Um, on the development front, I think we've found that uh, compilers have been really useful for us. So we're using uh, Accelerator's Titanium, and that's been uh, a really wonderful tool for us now because we operate our mobile strategy from one code base, and I think that's given us a, a terrific advantage. I think that there's a real opportunity in this space. Publishers in particular are uh, terrified, and rightly so, by the likes of Groupon, Living Social, Facebook, and all of the other players now that are getting into, the, uh, into their space. Um, the bottom line is the more uh, advertisers are sort of inundated with these marketing options, and the more confusion there is in that space, the less they spend with their local publisher. So what we've done is we've compiled, compiled all of these terrific tools so that an advertiser through one system can push content not only to digital but to print and a number of other mediums. It, it, it's sort of funny. Um, a few years ago, obviously Groupon launched. They, Groupon actually launched uh, after Porkfly and they ended up becoming a six billion dollar valued company. Um, their evolution is really funny to watch now because uh, in fact there's a, um, a well-known blog for the publishing space called Local Media Insider. And Elisa Cromer, um, who is their editor, wrote a tremendous story today on Groupon Now. And, and what she does is she basically gives uh, publishers around the nation advice on how to proceed. Groupon Now is a fairly large threat to publishers. And in her article today, she said, Groupon Now is what Forkfly was two years ago. It's, it is Forkfly. She said, the great news is Forkfly is for publishers. We recommend that you deploy Forkfly now rather than wait for Groupon now to gain traction in your market. So it's, it's interesting to watch how they've evolved and how we've evolved over the past couple of years. Um, I, think, I think this idea of having content delivered to you based on 
your proximity to a space is, is incredibly powerful. That's no surprise. Um, what was the surprise is that if you create a platform that merchants and, and advertisers can get very simply, um, it, it, it's a game changer. And you know, in Portland, we see over 80% of our of the merchants that are using the system engaging it on a regular basis. And with some of the things that we want to do ultimately, which is in, um, embedding social media and allowing them to control basically their entire digital and social presence through one integrated platform, that's really where we see this evolving. Um, advertisers, merchants will tell you on the whole they just don't have time to manage the overwhelming array of uh, offerings that are being presented to them. And there was a study by Burrell and Associates, a few, actually it came out a few weeks ago. The average merchant now is seeing seven to 10 solicitations on a weekly basis for various marketing options. That could be local bloggers, it could be a daily deal competitors. I mean, it's, they, they just, they don't know what to do. Um, so we sort of see Forkfly as playing Switzerland in all of this. Uh, what we really want to do is, we can't turn our backs on Facebook. Um, Publishers right now are starting to recognize 10% of their advertisers are already spending now on Facebook ads. That's 10% now that aren't spending with their publisher. So we're already working with the Facebook ads API to figure out how an advertiser can make it one click simple to push content to Facebook and monetize it on behalf of the publisher. Um, so we're, we're really excited about some of the things we're cooking up here at uh, Forkfly, um, but the end objective is we really want to just simplify uh, merchant slides. Uh, I'm sort of the slacker of the family, uh, in a sense. Um, I've got uh, I've got a lot of family from the East Coast. So, who inspires me? Well, my family. I know it's it's tired, but I will tell you, um, my oldest sister Lori. Uh, she's the CMO of Talbots. She's one of the most remarkable people you'll ever meet. My sister Greta, uh, Yvonne. Yvonne just uh, uh, retired from the New York City Ballet. Like I said, I'm the slacker. I'm out here in the West Coast, uh, you know, playing in software. And then my sister Flavia um, has been a humanitarian aid worker for years in places like Sudan and uh, Congo and Ethiopia. From all of those uh, individuals, uh, I get to really get a, you know a broad array of people that inspire me. And when I look at what they've done, it it really drives me not just to not to succeed, but to just be better. I think I, I've just found that I'm really inspired, especially in the Portland scene, by the passion local developers have for their own respective projects. Um, you know. I just think this is such an uh, such an amazing community in the development space, um, and I'm, I'm constantly inspired. You know, a few weeks ago, I was with uh, I was over at Pi with Rick, and I was sitting on a, a during Pitch Club, listening to uh, all of these young entrepreneurs, some of them not so young, uh, just talk about all of their their ideas and how they can get to the next steps. And you know, that when I when I attend something like that, it, it really fires me up. It gets me pretty excited. So I find that inspiring.